Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about Harry and Meghan's daughter Lilibet getting snubbed, the idol backlash intensifying, and Drake's credit card getting declined during a live stream. Okay, so Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's daughter Princess Lilibet celebrated her second birthday yesterday. It was clearly a very happy occasion for the family to come together. But this year the royal family chose not to send their best wishes, and the silence coming from their end was deafening. Last year the official Twitter account for Charles Camilla Williams and Kate all wish Lilibet a happy first birthday. They celebrated the occasion with a family picnic at Frogmore Cottage, which fell around the same time as a platinum jubilee celebrations for Queen Elizabeth II. It was then that baby Lilibet travelled to the UK and met her grandfather and great grandmother for the first time. But this year things seemed to be very different. Yesterday there was nothing but silence coming from the royal family's three Twitter accounts, even from Princess Eugenie, who is said to be a close ally of Harry and Meghan. The snub was also apparent on Prince Archie's fourth birthday last month, which fell on the same day as King Charles's coronation. Harry was briefly reunited with his family during the event, while Meghan stayed back in Montecito with Lilibet and Archie, and he was noticeably uncomfortable when he arrived at Westminster Abbey for the service. Many viewers noted that Harry seemed slightly awkward as he sat in the third row. Meanwhile, his brother William, Kate, and their children were sitting in the front. We also didn't see any real interaction between Harry and his immediate family. After the service, Charles and William took part in the the coronation procession back to Buckingham Palace while Harry left the event alone. He wasn't invited to the balcony appearance, which is probably why he left as soon as possible. Just hours after the ceremony, he was spotted travelling to the airport as his flight landed in LA that very same evening. Tensions in the family are clearly at an all time high, and they only got worse this week with Prince Harry's phone hacking trial. He accused news group newspapers of unlawful information gathering, said to be committed from the mid 90s until 2016. In court documents, documents, he alleged that his brother received a very large sum of money from the company in 2020 as a part of a settlement in his own phone hacking lawsuit. He insisted that they gave William a favourable deal in return for him going quietly. Harry claims he brought his brother into the lawsuit in case news group tries to argue that his claims should have been brought years ago. He said he didn't want the company to shut down his claims on the grounds that too many years have passed since the phone hacking took place. He also alleged that his father stopped him from taking any legal action that he wanted to take against the tabloids years ago. Harry accused Charles and Camilla of having a long term strategy to keep the media on side in order to smooth the way for them to be accepted by the British public. He said, When the time came, and anything that might upset the apple cut in this regard was to be avoided at all costs. Now, Harry will be the first British royal in more than a century to testify before the court when he appears in the first of five legal cases against UK tabloids. Along with news group newspapers, he is also suing the Daily Mirror's parent company, the Mirror Group newspaper. The Sun and the Associated Newspapers LTD, which owns the Daily Mail. But when his trial against Mirror Group kicked off this morning, he was noticeably absent. Dozens of photographers, TV camera crews, and reporters gathered outside the Rolls building to capture his arrival, only to learn that he was still dealing with jet lag. His lawyer said he would be unable to testify after opening statements because he'd taken a flight from LA on Sunday after celebrating Lilibet's birthday. He's since been accused of wasting court time after he failed to arrive at the High Court in London. The judge hearing the case was said to be not happy. He claimed to be a little surprised to hear that Harry would not be attending the morning's proceedings. When the Mirror's legal team indicated that they would speed through their opening arguments, Harry's team were forced to accept their client would not be ready in time. Harry claims that 33 of the 150 stories published by the Mirror Group were produced with information from hacking his phone and other illegal methods, like hiring at least 25 different private investigators to spy on him. In court documents, he said said that while his family has avoided testifying about possibly embarrassing matters, he is determined to take on tabloids that allegedly carried out vicious, persistent attacks on him and his wife. Alright now, have you seen the first episode of The Idol? It's just getting so much backlash that The Weeknd jumped in to defend it. HBO's recently released drama series has been embroiled in controversy ever since its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. At the time, it was slammed by reviewers for being vulgar and cheap, which is exactly what's happening all over again on social media. Media. Now the cast has come forward to defend it and address the backlash. Speaking to the New York Times, Lily Rose Depp defended the nudity of her character in the show. She said, Her bareness physically and emotionally was a big part of the discussions that we all had. Those were decisions I was completely involved in. She went on to say, There are so many women who felt exploited by the nudity they've done and have thought, I didn't feel great about that, but I'm comfortable performing in that way. I enjoy it. When asked about the controversial themes, she said she always knew they were going to make something provocative. 
provocative, which was not for everyone. She said, I don't think any of us were interested in making anything that was going to be fun for the whole family. In response to that, The Weeknd jumped in and said that the controversy was similar to when he first started making music. At the time, he felt that it was provocative and he knew a lot of people wouldn't like it. He said, not to compare it, but I feel that this is kind of like that again. This is not going to be for everyone and that's fine. We're not politicians. Director Sam Levinson also gave his thoughts on the discourse. He insisted that the controversy is what makes it exciting and running headfirst into that fire is thrilling. The Idol premiered on HBO yesterday. If you didn't know, the story revolves around pop star Jocelyn, who's played by Lily Rose Depp, and self-help guru slash cult leader Tedros, who's played by The Weeknd. The series focuses on the showbiz world, the dangers of too much power and manipulation, as well as other controversial themes. Levinson also confirmed that The Idol was taking place in the same universe as Euphoria. The series promises to tell the sleaziest love story in all of Hollywood, and so far it seems to have made good on that promise, for better or worse. The playlist described it as crude, gross, and sexist, while Collider said that it lacks depth and subtlety. Variety's review was even worse. They wrote, Levinson's world seems corrupt, and it shouldn't take degradation and suffering to make Jocelyn stronger. Euphoria audiences won't be too surprised by the shameful way he treats Depp's character, as both she and the show appear trapped under the weekend's thumb. So it seems like most critics really hated what they saw. This is not entirely surprising given that the series has been plagued by allegations of a chaotic and toxic set. Back in March, Rolling Stone published an explosive report claiming that production of the series had become wildly, disgustingly off the rails. 13 anonymous sources from production spoke out against both Levinson and The Weeknd. There were said to be endless delays, rewrites, reshoots, all which threw the production way off. Several members of the cast and crew also called Levinson's new creative direction disturbing and claimed that he was turning the series into an X-rated movie. Despite all these reports, Lily Rose Depp insisted that the experience filming the series was fun. She spoke to EW and said, for something that does explore darker themes and has some pretty heavy emotional moments to it, the vibe on set was quite lighthearted. The actress claimed that she was good friends with all of the cast members and they really understood each other. She said, that kind of energy is what made the heavier moments easier and possible because whenever you knew that there was a bigger emotional scene coming up, you felt like you were surrounded by people that you could feel comfortable with, people that have your back and you feel that in the show. In that same interview, she claimed that no one in the cast went full method or completely lost their minds. But she did say that Abel, aka The Weeknd, went full Tedros mode sometimes. And when he did, she said she would steer clear of him. So it seems like she was comfortable in her own experience shooting the series. Right now, it's tough to say what the next couple of episodes will look like, but we have reason to believe that it's only going to get more intense. So be sure to check that out if you're not turned off by all these crazy reviews. All right, now let's talk about what just happened to Drake. Over the weekend, he was left in a bit of an awkward situation when he tried to donate $500 to an online streamer, only for his Visa card to get declined. This happened despite the fact that he has a net worth of $250 million. Drake was hosting a live stream on the platform Kick when the incident occurred. He was trying to gift $499 to a streamer known as Daisy when he experienced some issues. After entering a verification code to authorize the purchase, a dialog box appeared on the screen showing that the payment hadn't actually gone through and he would have to pay again. When he realized what happened, he acknowledged that it was embarrassing and put on a very high-pitched sing-song voice. Right next to him was Lil Yachty who smiled at the whole thing. Drake then looked at someone off camera who was then made aware of the situation and it wasn't long before the card issue was resolved. That didn't stop him from getting roasted though. As a hilarious clip made the rounds on social media, fans were once again comparing it to the sassy Drake memes that never really seemed to die. One person wrote, yeah, Drake definitely wrote that 21 Savage song. They were specifically referring to a track called Rich Flex, which started all the memes in the first place. When Drake says, 21, can you do something for me? Can you talk to the ops next for me? Fans interpreted this part of the song as Drake centrally dancing in the recording studio for 21 Savage. The joke was that he was feeling sassy and zesty when he wrote the lyrics. Thousands of people then recreated this fake scenario on TikTok by twerking, dancing, and twirling their hair to his verse in the song. As the jokes gained popularity across the internet, eventually 21 Savage reacted in a live stream, and that went viral too. He looked absolutely bewildered at the stuff that people had come up with. And that was hardly the first time that Drake had been roasted online. In fact, sometimes it seems like everything he does gets made fun of. Back in December, he revealed to fans a diamond necklace that he had made using 43 engagement rings that he never used. It was said to be inspired by all the fiancés he never had or all the times he almost proposed. The necklace consisted of 42 
stones and a whopping 351 carats in diamonds. Apparently the entire thing took 14 months to complete from top to bottom and it was built by hand in New York City. Of course when this new bling was revealed some fans felt that the whole thing sounded a little petty and they even called Drake cringe because he wanted a reminder of his previous girlfriends. One person tweeted, I can't explain it but this is such a Drake thing to do. Drake is definitely the type of guy to make a necklace out of engagement rings. So he's clearly been getting a little too much hate for a while now. But what do you guys think about this latest story? Please let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.